Change is never easy, but you're going to experience some significant life change and something you've committed to, vowed to keep on with, keep on keeping on and persevere, but you'll find yourself letting go of the control and releasing something between when? September the 23rd and Christmas time, December the 25th, because we are set, setting course now for the equinox as the sun moves into the sign of Libra on the 23rd of September and sets a new course for us over the next several months. We're gonna talk about what this sort of let go, let God, change, release, something you thought you would not let go of, something you were gonna hold on to in your life for your better good, by the way, to let go of it, will be for you based on your rising sign, sun and moon. So stay tuned for that. And you can also basically check out my description box below for everything I have to offer, including my Sky Reader, uh, Time Your Own Life, Be Your Own Astrologer course. And if you're into um, my Patreon community, you wanna check me out there, you get all my YouTube uh, content ad-free early access. And during the month of September, two free courses by me plus my all signs videos for free value eighty dollars it's just a september promotion to give me a try you can always give me a try and leave and you still get those gifts so let's talk about what an equinox chart is okay let's go concept and all of that i'll be showing you the sky as well oh and i forgot to say if you would like to check out copper tist Wu, uh, his jewelry is amazing i do like uh, snake jewelry i do not think snake jewelry is evil <laughs> somebody said on my channel comments um i love this kind of stuff this is brass this is beautiful stuff and i am just sharing his work i do i'm not an affiliate uh, my code is lori 15 copper to swoo if you look below you can get this stuff for 15 percent off okay so now what is an equinox chart what is an equinox chart anyway what is an equinox well it's a change of season it's when the light and the dark are half and half now, depending on where you live in the um in the world it's going to be different so in the western northern in the northern hemisphere the top half of the world above the equator we're losing light after the equinox all right so after the sun enters into the sign of libra in the tropical western zodiac we go into a time where we go from half and half light the days and the nights are equal light and we begin to lose the light as we move towards of course the winter solstice. And so it's the opposite if you're living down in Australia, New Zealand, etc., the southern half of the hemisphere, because below the equator is the opposite. They're going to have the increase of light. But you can see the symbolism, correct? It's like this is a point in the sky, in the in the world, in terms of our modern day calendars. It happens to be uh, really close to midnight, like just before midnight on Pacific uh, daily time. Uh, that we're actually having the sun ingress into zero degrees of Libra. And if you happen to be uh, in Eastern daily time, it's going to be around three in the, in the 3 a.m. in the night. But this is where we have half and half light. So it's about that balance, Libra. It's about finding that balance between the dark and the light in our lives. And we're looking for that divine balance, not just our own personal life balance. But it will always ask about where that balance lies as the equinox is about that half and half, you know? So keep that in mind. Second of all, you know, in astrology, we look at the astrological new year as the spring equinox, which is happening, you know, in March around the 21st, 22nd every year. And that sort of sets the tone for an entire calendar year of story. And then we have sub stories and this Libra time frame that will go December, September 23rd this year to the solstice, winter solstice is a sub story within a larger story of the calendar year of astrology. So we're going to talk about this next few months, right? for you these next three months for you and talk about why it may be a time you need to of something you need to really let go of we're also going to broadly cover some stories here to get together today about what is happening with the world because it's a world story it's not just a personal story and there's some interesting asteroids involved in this particular story there's Folos, the domino effect snowball effect guy um qua or which is a really interesting um trans neptunian or way the hell out kuiper belt object we'll be going into details about that and we also have the minor asteroid uh, athena and the vestal flame involved in this narrative and the absolute 
as a story uh, as an asteroid that represents a story of uh, being able to see ahead of the curve and being able to predict something before or see something before other people do uh, among other meanings okay so we talk about the minor asteroids involved as well as the big picture story i'm going to show you what the sky looks like before we begin a lot of people were in a hubbub about russell brand yesterday and all the big disclosures of the day before about uh, his sexual uh, uh, conduct accusations i haven't looked into the story itself but i will say this i took a look at his solar return and in his solar return for his current age which his birthday was in june he has salacia which is malicious gossip or sensationalistic stories but also sometimes untrue stories squaring his midheaven his reputation and that is very suggestive isn't it that quite possibly these stories are not true or that we know that at this age he was going to come into the public eye with salacious gossipy uh sensationalistic stories about who he is and his reputation and the reason i'm even telling you this and i may have time to pull off a video on all of the reasons this is hitting him hard including the uh, uh um the the very intense moon lunation at the end of this month on, um coming up aries full moon that's on his natal moon and how that last eclipse last in April behind us also really hit him hard. So the reason I'm bringing it up, I'm not gonna labor that, belabor it, is because these minor asteroids that I like to talk about, like Salacia, can be extremely accurate. We'll be covering minor asteroids today. I find it's like the devil is in the details. I could have said to someone like Russell Brand, oh, you're gonna have some really b- bad gossip about about you or bad reputation sensationalism maybe at this age watch out for that you know I can't tell it couldn't probably have told him what it was about but I could have warned him it would be coming down the chute so if you don't know who Russell Brand is he's a major YouTube influencer and former comedian and he's very controversial anyway without this act activation uh let's take a look at the picture today and thank you for being a part of my world i forgot to introduce myself if you're new to my channel my name is Lori lothi and i'm using the western tropical zodiac and whole sign houses if you're one of my regular crew always with me in the live premieres where I chat with you about the content. Thank you for being back here again today. And don't forget to please hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're new to my channel, hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. It is my um, livelihood. And if I can continue to grow the channel, I'll continue to create content. And just clicking that subscription button makes a big difference in YouTube algorithm land. So I'm not begging you for uh, out of pride and arrogance. I'm begging you in a necessity and <laughs> uh, algorithmic uh, growth basically. Sorry, my mouse doesn't want to work. So we'll blow this up like that. All right. Can you see guys what I'm pointing at here? I hope so. This is what the, oh, (laughs) that's not the right chart. I have no idea what that one is. That's not what I was looking for. What the hell did it do? It totally didn't save the chart that I had created. It's gone. There's no way that's possible. I'm almost like still having Mercury retrograde. I really am. I had the whole chart cast and ready to go. I'll be right back and I'm recasting it. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at what this ingress chart, ingress meaning moving into the sign of Libra, sun chart looks like. This is the sun at zero, zero degrees. That's the, called the ingress chart. You snapshot it, you know, like a moment in time, like a solar return for a birthday chart. And I took out planets that are what we call in ancient astrology in aversion. These are planets in the ninth house and 11th house, fifth house and third house of this cancer rising chart or in the signs of Scorpio, Virgo, Pisces and Taurus. This means the sun is not talking to those planets in the ancient tradition. I just watched it, an equinox video by a fellow astrologer who does modern astrology and she astrology and she covered stuff that doesn't exist she kept talking unfortunately about the sun in a trine to pluto but in the ancient world although it's an astronomical trine it's not an astrological trine pluto would need to be in an air sign which is aquarius to trine that sun so i found it very awful to listen to because i kept thinking well that's not true that's not true similarly we have uh, uranus sitting up here in taurus and she kept talking about the trine from the sun to Uranus and Taurus and I'm like wait a minute no that's not a trine for that to be a trine Uranus would have to be in Gemini so understand in the ancient world trines were flowing energy between similar elements air to air earth to earth fire to fire water to water so I just wanted to clarify that so what I, I took out the aversions because really Uranus is, and, and is doing absolutely nothing positive or anything at all 
not even talking to that sun as it ingresses into Libra. Now, Pluto is in a whole sign square, okay, square, whole sign square relationship, but not an astronomical or astral, not a degree-based square. Okay, so we're just going to leave it there because Pluto is there. Let's go on ahead and talk about what is happening in the sky as we look at the entry of the sun here. Well, for the first time in two years, Mars is in Libra. That's something to talk about. Mars is in Libra with the south node, and that hasn't happened since like Oh my God, what year was that? I have my whole list of that for my other video on Mars and Libra. Maybe it was the 1987 time frame, but it's like Mars and Libra has a synodic cycle. It actually does connect, by the way, to stock market corrections and bear markets, which I have covered. But the point is we have some interesting developments here that are not all that common. Therefore, we're going to pay attention to it. I was just hoping to find my notes about the last time Mars and Libra co-joined here, but it does always... Uh, um, connect to market stock market and economic turbulence so in libra in libra especially and if you watch my mars and libra video you'll find out about it but individually it's not about you're not a stock market right you're going to find there's something in the next three months is asking you to mars cut and sever let go or fight for in a balanced harmonious possibly diplomatic way and let go because of the south node what do you need to release what do you need to surrender what do you need to uh let the wa the water drain down the sink and let it go that's kind of or the air go down the, the whirlpool and uh, let it go and that's going to be a big story for the next three months in some area of your life and second of all that's athena the goddess of knowledge and wisdom and strategy i find she's very active with authors and librarians and lawyers charts in my practice she's really intelligence wisdom and knowledge and knowingness from a deep level of intelligence she also can be like minerva connected to war in the ancient world so her counterpart greek and roman roman minerva greek athena so here we have athena sitting with the sun so right away there's a call for the next three months baking in three months of archetypal energy of are you going to rise to a new level of wisdom or knowledge in some area of your life in order to make changes mars and let go of things in the libra part of your sky Alrighty, in that one of 12 whole sign house pie slices in your sky based on your rising sign. You can listen for sun and moon secondarily. Also here, we can see that Venus is in charge of what goes on in her Libra house. She's the boss of this story. And she's really close to Juno, the goddess of perseverant commitment. She was the wife of Jupiter and she stuck with that guy, even though he philandered and had affairs and was a tricky bugger. And so it's about that vow to commit. Now, it can represent a business partnership or a commitment to a love partnership or the commitment to something or situation in your life that you're really, really dedicated to. Now, because she's with Venus, Venus is the goddess of love, so a lot of us will have themes around love relationships and commitment that are coming into the story over the next three months, vows to partner in some way. And will we have to let go? Not necessarily directly, but Mars is, is in that cut, sever, and refine um, you know, energy that he has a sword here in air, and he is in a flow but not quite perfecting a flow to Venus. And this is called a refrenation. Basically, they won't get together in any kind of meaningful way, which will be a conjunction until February. So they're trying to work together, but they're not quite connecting. So that kind of leaves Venus in the lurch. You know, she's like, Mars, Mars, I'm the boss of you. Let me talk to you about what you're doing over there in my house. And he's like, yada, yada, yada. I'm not really paying attention. But by the way, you're trying to catch my attention and I'm trying to hear you, but there's some serious static. I kind of get what you're saying, Venus, but I'm not sure what you want me to do. That kind of gives him a bit of autonomy from Venus. Venus, if you ask me. Next of all, you can see a energy here called a wedge. And this is Mars in Libra opposite Chiron North Node and forming a wedge to Venus. And again, I really, really wish that Venus would catch up with Mars and they'd have a real conversation. But Mars will talk in a real conversation to Juno. So again, what kind of harmonious, balanced and flowing breaking of a vow agreement or a connection to another person? most likely or even to something you committed to do could be your earning strategy if you're a cancer rising it would be an earnings commitment that you might have to negotiate change in order for it to be more valuable for your career success if you are cancer rising so when we get to all sign i'll show you how that wedge might work over the next three months as a theme that's running through your life
Second of all, this is a T-square right here. I'll annotate the T-square. Give me a minute. Um, annotate, so annotate, annotate. There we go. I will annotate the T-square using my really bad, you know, way of doing it. I know that I could make straight lines if I figured it out. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, especially for the collective, for the world at large. There's the sun and there's that T-square. Okay, T-square, basically it's a triangle and it represents tension. It's made up of two 90 degree angles and an opposition. All right. Now, we don't like them because they're not easy, but they bring change and they bring action and they bring decisions. And that's a really hot mess in my drawing, but you get the idea. So basically involved in the T-squared directly is the sun with Athena, the goddess of wisdom, knowledge, and strategy. And over here in this cancer part is the vestal flame of sacred devotion. And she often represents things that have to do with um, what we were going to persevere and dedicate ourselves to with almost a devotional reverence. But she also represents celibate women, childless females, okay, uh, priestess energy. And there's something a, bit, a little bit to me concerning about that, honestly. And that is that she's with this asteroid here that is very much potentially, that's that uh, seer, absolute, the centaur, who could foresee some challenge in a wedding, um, you know, the bad things that happen at a wedding with the lapiths. And I'm going to stop the annotation now. Let me just stop it. Clear what a hot mess that is to talk about the asteroids here because this is a world story and I always do a bit of mundane astrology as you guys know so what I would say is this I am a little bit concerned about potential stories breaking through the world to do with health matters okay because there is a trine from that sun to the hygiene of the goddess of hygiene and health and I'm recording on the day that or you know the whole India a uh, virus story is breaking, by the way, for that virus that comes from bats. Can't remember what it's called. It could be very deadly. I don't think it's going to escape India, just so you know, intuitively. But anyway, um, it's sort of like Ebola, right? And it's usually transmitted between animals and humans, but human to human transmission does ha happen. But anyway, here we have, so it's not that story. <laughs> here we have what is going on regarding fertility? That's what I'm going to say, because this is the vestal flame in the sign of the mother, cancer, and that's not her happy place. I mean, she doesn't do mothers, babies, and children. She's like devoted herself to a sacred de dedication at the expense of marriage and children in the ancient literature. So this energy of Hestia, Hestia and Vesta is in a very interesting place. And this is the seer absolute. So I'm going to read the software right now to you about how absolute is delineated by the particular software writer that I'm using. And we'll, we'll see how it lands. Is that absolute or Folos? Sorry, that's Folos. Absolute is on the other side. So let's go ahead and talk about, oh no, that's correct. No, I have it right. Sorry, these little symbols doth beguile me. <laughs> I did have it correct. Okay, so let me go find Vesta and let me go find good old Absolus. Well, I know you're in here because that's why I added you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like I'm in my own little universe here, guys of what is uh, some kind of strange condition of as if I'm having a Mercury retrograde. Of course, everything was here because that's why I put it into the system and now I can't find it in the back end as if it somehow, there we go, found it. All right, uh, let's make it smaller for a minute. So, okay, Absolute, a centaur who was a seer and foresaw the wedding, bad, what the wedding, Leading to a battle between the lapis and the center. So then the, the, the way it's delineated here, sensing things that may be going awry, sensing something that may be going awry, having a premonition, right? Um, there, that there are serious issues that are being hidden. Accepting your vision may be only that, nothing more. Feelings of persecution for your beliefs or perceiving conspiracies, real, real, or imagined. Don't forget, when we say conspiracy, people go ne negative, but conspir conspiring happens and conspiracy occurs. So I'm just saying. There is this kind of archetype right here. On the other side of this T-square, my mouse is not working and I don't know why, but on the other side of the T-square is the moon. And the moon is a uh, first quarter moon. It's, it's 
like literally nine degrees away from the sun. It's the first quarter moon in the sky and it's coming off of the Virgo new moon on September 14th. And now it's a first quarter moon. And at the same time, we see that that first quarter moon that's trying to push something through below the surface with gusto and verve, because that's kind of like the shoot that comes out from underneath the ground that wants to push through in the hard pack of spring. So it's a struggle, but there's wanting to bring something green and fresh into the world. Okay, there's that. This is the other two energies follow, so domino effect. I talked at length about the domino effect in a couple other videos, particularly around the Aries um, moon that's happening on the 29th of September, with the snowball effect, something small, snowballing into something larger, something incidental becoming much larger. And over here we have qua or, Q-U-A-O-A-R, qua or, and qua or is a very interesting trans-Neptunian slash Kuiper belt object. Now, in the way my software delineates this qua R, because there's many ways to delineate it, it's being observed by astrologers, people are looking at what it might mean, no one knows for sure, but it is a, it's an asteroid um, 50,000, and it's a creation god of the Tonga people, and it is about creating a new system without any precedent, um, making something new, new rules, building new structures, being creative, not following the rules or the way things have been done before. So it's got that generative, creative energy, doing things in a fresh new way, not following the rules, etc. So keep that in mind. And of course, I did tell you what follows is kind of a domino effect. There's also a square to Salacia. And I'm going to, I'm just going to put that in there. I didn't, but I'm going to add Salacia right now so we can look at her as well, because that's a sensational, uh, you know, maybe true, not true, uh, kind of news story vibe that could be picking up big time in the next three months as a result of this lunation for the world. I mean, this ingress of the sun into a Libra for the world. Salacia looks like a seashell. I actually dreamt about a seashell the other day and it was a really interesting dream, and I recognized I was dreaming about Salacia because I recognized the glyph, among other things. Now, Salacia is at nine degrees of Aries, and she's going to be in a complicated relationship to the moon that's coming up at the end of September, the Aries uh, full moon. So pay attention to that video. Um, it's already out. But right now we see Salacia. That's a thing, that's a thing that's also felling, like, I got, you fell a tree, Russell Brown, because Russell Brand, because Salacia is on his moon right now. All right, so that's why he's getting all this gossipy news about him, <laughs> but it's also in a solar return squaring his midheaven this, at this time. So this Salacia is sitting up here and she is opposite basically the ingress point of the sun. And therefore she kind of forms a bit of a grand cross to this whole story. Uh, it makes it much more likely that what the moon here opposite the Vestal Flame, the flame of no children, childless feminine, childless female, energy connected to the moon, connected to some very sensationalistic stories. Now, there is some concern among certain factions of the world that women's fertility rates may be dropping or just fertility rates for the whole world may be dropping due to certain things that I can't mention on YouTube because I might get deplatformed. But keep your eye on uh, fertility shock stories coming through the sky over the next three months from the 23rd of September onward. And wisdom and knowledge be maybe what we learned from experience or what we learned in hindsight, which can be unfortunately 2020. In your own life, of course, will you have salacious gossip in your life that or some kind of uh, sensational news stories about yourself. Most of us won't. I doubt that's very much going to happen. But as I look through all signs, if it feels to me like that's something I need to mention for you, I will. You know, duck, duck falling news stories that are salacious. Let's go ahead and do the all signs before I do. This is a little stop share. I'm going to get a little bit of chocolate to refresh myself, and then we're going to get going. I took the I took my um, big video, the, the ram's horns thing down because I got complaints by some people that it made them think of evil, but I'm, I'll probably use it again. I love ram's horns. Now I'm in my soft and gentle backdrop that doesn't scare or offend people. If you're new to my channel, don't forget, try me out. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very like three planets and Aries and an asteroid, so I can be very gnarly when it comes to complaining about the trolls. Some people enjoy that about me and some people hate it. And okay, I'll call you ogres. Somebody said, stop calling people trolls. It's too negative. So I wrote back in my comments and said, should I call them ogres? And then she said, and you're an ogre and I'm not going to subscribe. <laughs> people are so weird. Okay. So uh, thank you, Melissa Carey, Sean Pearson, Stephanie, 
um strictly gaming sedona horse medicine anastasia d yes thank you very much our soul songs flower remedy um who else did i want to shout out today um purple table tarot and crystalline alchemist and one rare bird and um, Noah Morgan and Herbal Ent Empress and Grounded Extracts and the Feral Writer. You guys are so amazing. These are my regulars. If you're not new to my, if you're new to my channel, these types of folks, like we've been hanging together now for months in the live premiere. I get a lot of fun getting to know people around the world because I chat with you during the live premiere of my content. We watch it together. So that's something that interests you, real contact with the astrologer. Plus I like and read all my comments and comment back. Then you might want to try me out. All right. So we're going to do all signs now. We're going to start with Aries and I'm just going to have that chocolate break and we'll get going. Oh, I almost stopped my recording at which point. I all right, guys, we're getting started now and we're going to play playfully look at the next six months ahead six months three months ahead between september 23rd or so and all the way through until the winter solstice and we're going to talk at christmas time basically we're going to talk about your sign we're starting with aries don't forget to like subscribe if you're in the premier hit that notification bell let's go back to the chart i'm going to playfully play with my one of my favorite beautiful tarot decks a lot of you don't know this i'm a very accomplished tarot reader for many years and we're going to be doing the tarot of the divine so everyone's going to get a card and you're going to get my astrological guidance as well just for fun just to break up you know the same old same old try something new see what happens and hey by the way you guys know i have that weekly monday thing that comes out every monday it's my week ahead view uh, of the astrology of the week ahead this one was a lot of fun to do i'm recording on the monday the day that i put it out it's all about that breaking free the matrix stuff go check it out uh, see if you like that kind of content. If you're new to my channel, getting the weekly forecast heads up for your sign and what's most important in the week ahead is what I'm aiming to provide. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at Aries. I'm one of you. I'm my sun and moon here as well as Mercury. And in our charts, we are looking at this energy of an ingress as it happens every fall into our seventh house, right? So every October, I mean, every September, the sun will enter into Libra and that will be a beginning of a story that takes place over three months to do with our significant relationships, particularly in love and sometimes in business. Now, this time there's a lot of knowledge and wisdom and change. Mars is a god of change in the ancient world. That's what he meant. He was really about shifts of change of direction, momentum and action. And so what changes are going to be made here in our significant love relationships, particularly for the rising Aries? Because if it's about your sun, it could be about your career. And if it's about your moon, it could be about your home, okay? So keep in mind the difference between the rising sign being about your real life, you know, in this case, rising sign Aries, big changes maybe in significant business and love relationships, or how you apply your, your uh, focus to your client's audience and marketplace seventh house tenth from the tenth you can see here that there is this tension with this t-square up here and the moon is at the top of your sky and that's your public reputation and pluto is the power of your public reputation but you can see that there is something going on to do with a domino effect one small thing in the next three months cascades out a big change to your public reputation especially as it connects to your clients audience and marketplace these are your seventh house matters possibly as well having a qu first quarter moon pushing out at the top of your sky with this sort of do it different and create something new that no one has done before quo or qua or qua or then maybe you're looking at breaking through making some changes forced by mars with the way you interact with your clients audience and marketplace customers etc and doing something brand new like a creation god would do and that one small change dominoes into more power, Pluto, and more success. But you're breaking through and trying something fresh, possibly. And gossipy salacia over here, you're the one with the big mouth. You're the one with the salacious gossip, you know, the sensationalistic speech. I'm already getting in trouble for saying how I feel about certain things in the world. And I probably won't shut the hell up because you know what? Then I'm not really being me and I'm acting like a timid little uh, fear, fear, fearful mouse on YouTube. I guess if I get deplatformed or demonetized or something like that, I wish I had kept my mouth shut. But at this point, some of you know, I've said some things that are controversial. By the way, I'm not political. All right. I, someone just said, oh, you're obviously anti Joe Biden. I'm not. In the very same video, I criticized Donald Trump. I am Canadian. I am not. I'm, I've never voted in my life. So I'm actually really just not political. All right. So moving onward. 
Um, because Venus is the Lord of the story for you, Aries, because she's the one in charge of what happens with this ingress. She's sitting in Leo at the time, and she's connected very tightly to the goddess of commitment and vows. And you know, you may want to look at a, a, a deeper level of commitment that you want to gently let go of to somebody like a lover or a child or a business project or a creative project or an entrepreneurial project. Are you overly committed? dedicated and perseverant to something that might be wearing you down here because you know you can see that vestal flame that's the hearth fire that's in the home right grow you know tending the flame getting the kitchen going all of that it's like devotion to things that go on in your home in your fourth house and you do have a possibility here that what you're looking for is some kind of change regarding the balance between your home and your home life and your business partner, marriage partner relationship, or even your audience and marketplace and client connections or outreach. And Venus is saying, well, I'm the Lord of what's going on here. She may be asking you to connect to a deeper level of vitality and joy, enjoyment, fun, play, pleasure, right? About what you're doing in the world because she is flowing to Mars. She's trying to support it in general with, a, with not it's not perfected, but with Juno. Um, can you make a deeper commitment to a child in your life, to uh, your own creativity? Uh, for me, that's resonating. I want to start writing fiction again. Can you make a deeper connection and commitment to your sexual and romantic and creative and artistic life in order to help balance out some kind of problem here in the home life? Maybe I would say for some of you guys with um, all of this going on here, you might be really pushing yourself to some level of exhaustion or um, or burnout, okay? Because South Node in the uh, seventh house can have you let go of how much energy you're putting into other people it, generally over the next year and a half and maybe focus more on nurturing yourself in the home, making commitments to your creativity over the next three months to your inspiration and maybe to doing things differently in your career, creating a whole new system. Oh, I didn't draw a card for you. I apologize. Everybody gets a card. So what's the card for Aries? I just, oh, thank goodness. I always say I'm going to draw a card for people and I forget. Okay, it's the King of Cups. Okay, the King of Intuition, the King of um, Emotional Intelligence, the King of being in a state of, you know, understanding your own creative power, you know, creativity. So the, there, there is a possibility this is asking you to step into that part of yourself and sit on the throne of your intuition, your emotional intelligence, your creativity. Um, you know, kings in general are um, the top of the pile, right? What kind of kingdom are you building in your life, Aries? And is it emotionally satisfying, intuitively rewarding? Is it allowing you to thrive in your world? All righty, if you're a Taurus sun, moon and rising, especially rising sign, uh, what we see every year is that the sun comes into Libra during the equinox and gives you a three month health story and a three month work story. Now for Taurus's sun, moon and rising, your health is going to be on the focal point every year, basically. And there's going to be different narratives about how that looks, as well as the job work life, maybe something to do with pets. No offense, no offense, but here we have Mars and South Node lost. Losing a pet in the next three months would not be outside the bounds of what is possible here you know, pet passing or pet, uh, you know, running away or something. I'm not worrying you, but that's very much what that can be. It can be changes in your rental situation. If you're renting a home and you may buy a rent a new home, not buy, but this, if you want to rent a new home or you're a landlord and rent out a home, this can be some changes there as well over the next three months. One of the things about when the ingress is here and you see Athena on the sun, when it comes to your work or your health, you might be really strategic. You might be making strategic, intelligent, and well-researched and well-knowledged decisions about both of these things. At the same time, this is all going on in your sixth house as it always does. You can see that there is many other factors in play. I'm gonna start with you by talking about Venus in the fourth house. Have you had a desire to re redecorate, rearrange and re re redo your home? Because often that happens with Venus here. She's been here, she'll be here for four months for goodness sakes until October the 7th and four months before that. But right now, what is going on here with Venus and the Juno, the goddess of commitment and vows to persevere in love, all right? 
other than maybe offering up a new rental contract situation or a change in that regard, there is some kind of thing that Venus is really preoccupying with, which has to do with love in the home, love at home, love of your home, or decorations and designing and redesigning in your home. And this is a new beginning from the sixth house, which can allow you to come into a very refined balance regarding your works and health as it applies to the beautification of your home or discovering joy and love and commitment to joy and love in your home. Now, we have a big gnarly energy here of a square to the moon to quote, uh, qua or and to this asteroid follow some domino effect of creating something new that didn't exist before, um, you know, trying to do it a new way uh doing it your own way creating something new in the house of higher education in the house of foreign travel to land, foreign shores the house of book publishing even the house of your spiritual faith and belief and i think the, a lot of you taurus people may be looking at regenerating and renewing and starting afresh because it's a first quarter moon, some kind of philosophy of how you approach life. You know, what is the meaning of life? What's your spiritual philosophy? But how do you want to create something new, though, in that ninth house area of your sky? This is also a ingress in which there's an opposition to Salacia, and you have to watch out for people behind the scenes gossiping or not having your back because your hidden enemies belong to the 12th house, and gossip may prevail, uh, especially as it it pertains to gossip about you in regards to maybe um, your your academic environment or your foreign travel environment or legal matters as well. Also, finally, the vestal flame of devotion in the third house of siblings or travel or even um, your local neighborhood and neighbors. And here we have the uh, seer absolutes who could foresee uh, something before it happened, but also in the software describes it as sort of, you, you know, conspiracies real or imagined. What's going on in your local neighborhood uh, in the three months that follow this uh, particularly interesting ingress? I think it's more like, what are you going to devote yourself to when it comes to uh, your, your relationship to your siblings, cousins, or local environment? But it requires you making some changes in your sixth house that was your, again, your workhouse. So some of it may be literally a change of job. Like I'm not going to work at that local environment. I'm going to move. If you work in a real place, a retail or a store or brick and mortar place, um, there's a change going on for some of you, Taurus, is about how you approach that kind of work. And you may be making a cutoff change ending as a result of the Mars South node strategic though. So I would say a lot of Tauruses will quit a job or get fired. Uh, and find something better in you. And this is going to apply to the online world too, because the third house is your virtual neighborhood if you work online. So I'm going to say just period, change of job in the next three months for some of you Tauruses. Now let's move on to Gemini. Oh, see, I always forget. I always forget. Time stamping sister is going to have a nightmare on this. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Here's your card for this three months ahead in the equinox chart. And you're dealing with the four coins. And you may be feeling... Um, pinched financially, you may be feeling a scarcity around your money, but you're also trying here to maybe build a new foundation financially at the same time. So in essence, both things are true. Um, because there's a cutting off ending in the job situation, or maybe a change in a rental situation, for some of you, you may be feeling, okay, well, if money's not great, what am I going to do? I always encourage people when I see the four of coins in any reading or whatever, um, to figure out how to create a new foundation because four is a foundational energy so that the question of scarcity or uh, clinging to what you already have is not there. And it doesn't have to be just clinging to money. Be careful you don't cling to that job that you don't want or that home that you really don't care about being in any longer. I think I'm going to start with a Gemini next and I shall pull a card before the end or after. Gemini, sun, moon and rising sign. All right, so what happens that every year, um, the same time of year, right, um, the sol uh, the equinox, this is September 23rd this year, more or less, you see the sun moving into zero degrees of your fifth house of children and romantic love and entrepreneurship and creative projects. This is a new story. It's different every year. We haven't had Mars here for a couple of years and not with the South Node for quite, quite many years, right? So how are you? letting go, releasing and surrendering something to do with one of your children 
or the desire to have a child or something to do with your entrepreneurial or creative projects. Sometimes if you're dating someone, how are you needing to let go of that dating romantic love relationships? You know, how you need to like change your approach to sexuality, things like that can happen here. Like if you're like a Gemini sun, it could be mostly about career, but if you're a Gemini rising, it definitely be about your romantic life or your life regarding children. <clears throat> now, you're going to be strategic about whatever changes happen here because of Athena. But if you're any kind of Gemini wanting to write a book, this is like, yeah, in the next three months, write a book. Okay. Athena can be that girl that tells you to go ahead and go for it. And with support from Venus Juno, um, do that writing, you know, online, do that writing, uh, in a neighborhood cafe. That might be a great idea. I write best one, like uh, JK Rowling, when I get out of my house and go to a cafe, I'm giving myself advice, by the way, <laughs> I'm a progressed son in Gemini. Also, maybe um, there's a forward momentum with a sibling, particularly younger, to visit or travel to them for creative project ideas or just enjoyment, leisure travel, involving in the next three months, a sibling. For some of you, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. I think that with the moon, though, up here in a square with quote, qua or and um, folos, the domino effect of new creation in your finances. Some of you, Geminis, over the next three months will figure it out. New tax structures I'm going to incorporate, new ways of dealing with your loans and mortgages, new creative structures around royalty income, passive income. Uh, you know, property sale income, anything like that. So a lot of Gemini's are looking at new uh, retirement fund income, oh, the way you invest your money. All of that is going to be a new creation you're working on, hopefully anyway, over the next three months from this, uh, sol this equinox point to the solstice in winter in December. I also would encourage you to watch out for gossip amongst your friends about you, spinning out of this gossip, sensationalistic stories, or even people telling untrue true things about you. This is your larger groups of belonging, friendship circles. That's where that's exacerbated, by the way, with the North Node. You could have a, a wound by a friend, a friend making untrue statements about you in a public way in the three months that follow this particular uh, solstice equinox point ingress. Lastly, what do you need to devote yourself to? What do you need to really buckle down and persevere in when it comes to the earnings and work strategies? But we also see that we have the asteroid Absolus who could foretell the future and also not only see the dark side of a wedding that went awry, but he can also represent, you know, things that are conspiratorial, real or imagined. Well, I don't know. It, to me, it's like, I, I can see the writing on the wall. I can't keep doing as many readings as I'm doing. I'm actually turning into a burnout and I've already cut back my schedule and it's already feeling too much. And people are booking me next May and April. So the point is I see the writing on the wall. I can't work this hard. So I'm using me as an example because I have a progressed son in Gemini and that's about my career. Uh, so where are you needing to see forward, forward seeing, seeing the writing on the wall about some kind of like perseverant dedication that may be obsessive to something to do with a work strategy or something that you eat in the kitchen because the Vestal Flame is the kitchen goddess. And are you looking at uh, having to mitigate something about the way you eat and what foods you eat? And you're seeing the writing on the wall that yes, you and gluten do not get along or something like that. All right. I hope that's useful. Let's draw a card for you and see what it says. All right. All right. And let's um, click into the card mode. And it is drawing a card for you the queen of coins okay that's a that's a rich card a wealth card a money card it's a woman of resourcefulness i always jokingly also think she's very much like uh let me get you some matzo ball soup you know like that the, the nurturant uh feed you healthy you know to get you healthy jewish mama archetype um so it's that very earthy feminine but she is a, a, a money card as well so it looks like some of you are looking at over the next three months increasing your finances i'm not surprised right we got a devotional flame burning burning in the money house while well, you're redoing a, a creation god follows effect domino of how you can master the treasure chests of the chunky money eighth house it makes a lot of sense actually given what this guy says right um so just stopping the share to take a sip of my tea and remind you to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not done that and check out my all my description boxes down below for my courses, my Patreon community, and all the things I've got to offer. This is a nettle, mint, minty nettle tea. 
made locally in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm not a sponsor, but my partner James just brought me some because I'm not feeling well today, guys. I, I know I don't look too bad, but I do not feel well. I thought I had COVID. I took a test. It's negative. Mm, but I need that tea. Um, I don't get headaches almost ever, and I've, for two days I've had one, so what can you do, you know? Then the show must go on. <laughs> All right, back to the business at hand. All right, here we go. Now we're moving on to the next sign. Yay. The next sign, am I actually showing you the screen? I can't tell. I am. All right, so we're moving into Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Um, well, here we go. Every year, the same time of year. This is this time is the 23rd of the month of September. The sun is ingressing into your fourth house of pro property, home, land, domicile, domestic life, private life. This is where you are home alone. And this is also where people don't see you because you have your privacy here for the most part. Now, if you have this new beginning this time around with Mars in the South, no, you're making a change of home or changes in your home. I mean, Mars can be like, let's renovate, let's construct something new. Um, but you'll have to watch out for art arguing in the home in the three months that follow and some kind of loss as a result of conflict in your home. Mars is trying to find the balance and act very peaceful and diplomatic about it, hopefully not passive aggressive, but that can be very complicated because you can also see that Mars here is talking to the moon right? First quarter moon in the house of your marriage partnership. And so if you're, there is any discord in your marriage partnership in the next three months after this, I wouldn't be surprised. But you may have to figure out a domino effect, new way, creation way, new creation into your existing long-term love relationship, partnership, and, and maybe for some of you, how you approach your business. Because your 10th house, 10th from the 10th is your 7th, and this is about your audience and clients and marketplace. And maybe some of you are looking at creating a whole new domino effect, snowball of goodness in how you operate in your outreach to those people that are a part of your work and business structures. Venus is ruling the whole show from your second house and she wants you to be making money and doing well financially, but she may be asking you to partner with someone and not do it alone. Maybe find a business partner, someone else to help you, or if you are looking for a job, certainly new job, new job, new work contract can be coming in the three months that follow, but maybe for some of you, it means a change in the, how you operate in the home or a change of home and letting go of your current home situation. The salacious gossip person up in the 10th house, the seashell lady, Salacia. Ah, well, you know, sensational stories, true or untrue about you may be circulating in the wider world or in the office and creative or office and work career space. Okay. And you could feel a little wounded with that Chiron up there every now and then about people say about you, but let it go, let it go, let it go. Oh, but I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if you don't have some sort of, hmm, workplace gossip stories that are not so fun over the six months that follow. I mean, three months that follow this equinox point. And then finally, you are the dedicated Vestal Virgin uh, holding for it within yourself, maybe even being very celibate, maybe very pristine, very pure, very magical. And you may also be able to see the future very clearly with a keen eye right now. And you're applying that to what needs to change in your home and what might need to change in your significant business love and a client part of your sky. So you've got a keen eye here about what might need to change. And it will be your decision, I would say, given the power of the Vestal Flame. Um, and it is in the Temple of the Moon, right? And the Moon is in, I didn't say in the beginning, but the, you know, the Moon is in it, her happy place. <laughs> She's in Capricorn. Oh, my sister is going to hate this. She timestamps and she will see me vacillating all over the place. All right, a card for you guys as a Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising that describes the three months ahead or gives you a clue about what to expect. The Ten of Coins. Well, you're making money, all right? It's a, it's a wealth card. It's a legacy wealth card. I didn't say this. Possibly you could get some money from an inheritance with 
Morris South Note here, or from the family of origin, you never know, uh, the loss of a, a, a of someone in your family of origin upline could lead to some money for you and giving you some fiscal hygiene. Um, but it's also just a money card accumulation of money. So obviously with Venus here in your second house, lording over the changes in your home life, and um, even flowing to your reputation house up here and supporting you, you're definitely looking at the next three months being a bit of a, a thrival in your finances regarding your work. All right, let's go into the next one, which is Leo. Sun, moon, and rising sign. So Leo, you have this uh, ingress of the sun into Libra on the 23rd of September, and it gives you a three month run of changes or focus in your house of siblings, younger in particular, and the younger one even, and also things to do with travel and skills-based teaching and learning and your online world. Uh, and your local neighbors and neighborhood. Now, I mean, honestly, this can even be uh, Mars, South Node, the loss of a neighbor. Someone moves out, someone passes away near you. And that's that wouldn't surprise me that that story could happen here with this Mars, South Node. But also, it can be travel, right? Just Mars is traveling, get in that train, plane, automobile, and go see a sibling or a sibling see, comes to see you in the three months that follow this this ingress um strategic travel strategic decisions around travel and siblings but there is some kind of need to let go and surrender and and change something and lose something here you might uh you know shut down your website <laughs> you might change your social media platforms up things like that you could also find that with venus in the house of you you are looking at the, the life through the lens of self-love you're being uh, you might find yourself more easily popular and congenial and you're persuasive and more charismatic and feel more beautiful than you normally do leo and you're trying to commit and commit to something or someone with great dedication and perseverance so that's what that juno uh venus vibe is and venus is looking over at mars gallivanting in her house not really able to quite control him right but it may be that you would like to um commit to something in business partnerships for instance online or to make some kind of contractual agreements anew anew with a sibling i do think that with the moon itself and by the way i didn't say this for most signs i should have but in detriment um the moon is sitting in the sixth house for you and it's about your health or your work and the work routines but also the health and health routines and you might need to make some significant changes in your what you do in your local neighborhood environment regarding how that can improve or support you to make those changes for better health. There's a new moon here though. I mean, a first quarter moon here. So you're trying to break through new ground to make these changes in some significant way, again, to improve the work and the health stories. I think that with Quoar and Folos, one small change in your health or work routines has a domino effect and it can help you support you in many ways in third house matters. Again, that can be your retail stories, your neighborhood, your siblings, uh, a writing project, for example, or even something to do with travel. I feel like Salacia up here is like, do you have any kind of gossip that may be coming off of your church or your temple or your social groups of uh, spiritual philosophy or somebody wanting to like bad mouth or sensationalize things you're doing in the ninth house especially if you're in an academic setting mm -hmm. so just watch for that in the next three months you could you could find yourself here with the vessel flame in the 12th becoming very interior almost like going into your own you know sacred cave and really wanting to work out some soul stuff in the next three months and that soul stuff has to do with how much uh, service you're willing to give to the world, what you think your indebtedness is to other people. On a very practical note, be careful that a pet doesn't like a pet Mars in the third, you know, run out in the street and be hit by a Mars story, which is an accident or a car. That could be very a sad story if you're not careful in the three months that follow. And don't tell me in the comments, how dare I mention a bad thing could happen. I'm giving you a preemptive strike. Keep your pets close to home for the next three months. This could literally look like, especially with Pluto, pet running into the street and being hit by a car. Uh, so be cautious. Now, up here, up here, you know, this is so beautiful if you are in a spiritual uh, direction in your life and you want to, you know, go inward and devote yourself to meditation, contemplation, da daily journaling, introspection, dream, dream work. Okay, and that th next three months can allow you to really dive into that in order to amplify some kind of change is needed 
in how you operate in those third house areas of your life. Okay. Let's draw a card for you. Third house areas. Remember, that's your home, your neighborhood. I mean, your neighborhood, your local neighborhood, your neighbors, your online world, your younger sibling. The Empress. Okay, get down, guys. Leos, be a queen of your kingdom. Get creative. Get fertile. Get um enjoy reality um use your imagination i love that use your imagination and use your inner uh visionary powers to create what you want in life especially given the vessel flame is here see your absolute you can almost see the future for yourself by spending some time contemplating dedicating yourself to some kind of devotional practice ideal time to pick up a meditation practice for example Alrighty, uh, is it time for another break? Nope, I'll keep going, then I'll break. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign in your sky. You've got this equinox start off with the sun moving into Libra on the 23rd of September. It opens up change in your finances, how you approach your earnings and money. You're going to let go, let God surrender, release the hustle. You don't need to work so hard after all. That's Mars on the south node. Strategic decisions around how you spend. You may also be very careful and be pulling back on spending problems, but certainly savings and spending stories are changing as well. Because you have some sort of you know help from venus in the 12th house you could have people here who are women maybe or just people who are really going to support you uh from the sort of backroom deals and negotiation strategies to support you to increase your success in your finances but maybe also by making a contractual agreement vow and dedicating yourself to some kind of new financial strategy uh, because if you make money online or foreign revenues and shores like I do, for instance, that also can be a very good story for the next three months with Venus in the 12th house vis-a-vis -vis that <clears throat> Mars Libra South Node event in your second. In other words, you can make more money through foreign shores, international companies and foreign land revenue. You can see that you have a moon uh, out of dignity in Capricorn and she's being stoic in your house of fertility, sexuality, pleasure and play, romantic love and children. If you're an entrepreneur, your entrepreneurial business, and that means consulting as well, you know, having your own business where you don't work for a boss, etc. A lot, a lot going on here with this Quoar and Folos domino effect. You want to create a new structure regarding your relationship to your sexuality, romantic partner, to children or fertility, or to your entrepreneurial and creative endeavors. And you wanna do something new that's never been done before. You wanna create a new structure that's new to you. And it will have a domino effect over the next three months after you get through this story, right? Until winter is a solstice. And also, well, you may also find that you if you're carrying a, there's a sacred flame of devotion of dedication up here with a sort of seer who can see the future right uh, absolute and what's going on up here in your 11th house is what are you being where is this devotion potentially uh activated devotion to um, a group of friends a friend or even to an obsessive devotion to greater and greater financial gain from your career is where is it causing problems? Where do you need to have something change? Technically, Venus, the goddess of pleasure in the 12th and Mars, the god of cutting away in the second, for some Virgos is letting go of a addiction or a self undoing pleasure or strategy as well. And when I look at this lunation, I mean, in this first quarter moon down here in the fifth house, it's also a house of pleasure. So some of you are looking at releasing some pleasure that may even be, you know, something you ingest or put in your mouth in the next three months are coming to terms with it in some way so that it's not out of balance. Mars is trying to find balance by cutting away what you don't need in the food ingestion, substance ingestion part of the chart. Um, you may want to also look at why you have a salacious gossip in your eighth house. <laughs> this is not a good place for that. Secret gossipy people around, you know, things you can't see. Um, I, I'm not so worried, but if there's gossip is coming out of your friendship circle, right? So watch out, you know, and get your ear to the floor. Um, are, are some friends talking ill of you behind your back? Not to be paranoid, right? Um, it could actually work out fine. And... <laughs> 
I don't know. With Salacia, I'm, I'm picking the simplest meaning for her. She also means tr- channeling and intuition and stuff. But with Salacia in your eighth house, there could be and Mars in your second. There could be some family of origin, financial money coming your way, but it's fraught with sensationalism. Okay, like I'm talking about inheritance money in the next three months or legacy wealth money and some sensationalism around it. I've got the judgment card for you guys, and that is to rise from the dead, to hear the call of the trumpet of the angels, and rise from something that's dead to you and dead in your life. It's time to resurrect right? And to use that resurrection process to renew your entire life. And by the way, the salacious sensationalistic energy of the eighth house can be money that your partner and you share and there, or that, you know, your significant other and you co-share or wish to co-share. And there may be a little bit of like sensationalistic, uh, crazy ass, even conspiratorial stories swirling around you in the next three months about that shared money or money that you wish to share and it's not shared. You're rising though from a grave, like rising out of the ashes to renew yourself. That is the good news. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. I put up to oh, 24 or more videos every month. And if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, then when I do my live premieres, you can chat with me in the live premiere and we'll get to connect together. And um, yeah, check my description box underneath the title of the video where all things are found. <laughs> Let's get back to the game at hand. I'm just going to take another tea sip and this is my commercial break. Copper to swoo. I don't, I'm not getting an affiliate fee. I love his jewelry. Check it out. Beautiful, beautiful brass crafted. That's a Ouroboros, a snake eating its tail. Yeah. And uh, Lori15 is your code for 15% off. If you, if you get some of his jewelry and you're listening to me and you want to tell me in the comments what you think, let me know because I do love it. And I was just gifted the jewelry in order to share it. So it's not a big deal. It's just, I like, I love his stuff. Okay. Let's go. It's all in the description box is all the info to to get that stuff for yourself. Let's get back to the story. So we finished with Virgo and we're moving into Libra, sun, moon and rising. So if you are a Libra, a Libra, some people say library, Libra, library book, Libra. If you're a Libra, we have a sun ingress here every year. So like all the cardinal signs, you know, the the Aries and the Cancer and the Capricorn and the Libra people have ingresses every year at the various seasons of the winter and summer solstices and the spring and fall equinox. So we are like the angles of the world, the world angles, okay? The world points zero degrees of these signs so <clears throat> technically this is always going to be a big deal for all the cardinal signs so here we have this version mars hasn't been here for two years with a south node for i don't know three decades or something the gist of it is that you have an energy going on right here right here that says time to make a big change libra in your body, in how you see yourself, time to let go of an old identity, to shed a skin maybe. Uh, you could definitely look at this as being, be cautious for inflammation, rashes, heat in the body over the next three months, um, injuries as well. But nonetheless, you do have a sword in your hand. And if you don't cut yourself, you're cutting out this stuff here, particularly. And you may be cutting away a business partnership a client relationship or a significant love relationship with that sword, but doing it as diplomatically as you can. <laughs> in the meantime, you're very strategic over the next three months with Athena conjunct the sun in the house of you, like a three dimensional chess player figuring out what you want to do next. I think that you could say that with the moon, first quarter moon down here with Quo R and Folos, Quo, Qua R and Fol, Qua or and Folos, that you may have a new invent. Uh, you want to create a new system, a new way of doing something with a domino snowball effect in your life regarding things to do with property and home, private and domestic life and real estate. And this moon is stoic and stern. She's out of her dignity here, but she's still here. And in her own kingdom across the way is the Vestal Flame of Devotion with the Seer. What kind of intense commitment, dedication and career devotion have you been doing or are you doing, and you may experience Mars square that a change as well as a a strategic career change for some of you Libras in the next three months as well. 
I think because the moon is at home in the fourth house, but she's uncomfortable. What are in Capricorn? What are you enduring? What are you being sort of super stoic about? That's it, not so comfortable. It's almost requiring a death and rebirth and a whole new change in your private and home life and who you live with, what you do in your nest. There may be some salacious gossip or sensationalistic stories about you from your audience, your clients, your business partner or your significant marriage type partner, or they may be embroiled in salacious and scandalous stories. And you got the sword up and you're like, e, I don't like all that salaciousness. Let's fix it somehow. Venus is ruling the whole show. It's her house where the equinox is happening. She happens to be a conjunct the goddess of commitment and vows of commitment to business partners, love partners, or contractual agreements. But this is in the house of friendships and also great career gains. Your dedication to your career is definitely going to maybe reap over the next three months some kind of new contractual agreements. It could be quite lucrative for you, which is wonderful, but you still have to pay attention to the bigger picture story. And that is, is that you are having some um, private life, home life, life gnarly discomforts as far as I can tell and you need to create something brand new in that system of what you do in your home how you do it in your home where you are in your home what you want to do in your home it's, it's a, you know it is a, a first quarter moon you're trying to break through and bring something fresh to the home life okay that's basically it and it may be the home life with your significant other that needs a big overhaul and anything else? No, I'm going to draw a card for you guys as a Libra sun, moon, and rising. The ace of coins, a new beginning financially. Can be starting a new job, especially with a ded dedication flame up there. And it can also be starting a new uh, project um, that can reap financial rewards for you. Um, but it's a new prosperity beginning, a new financial beginning in your life over the next three months as well. Um, but it would definitely in this chart, according to the solstice chart, I mean, the equinox chart would be more connected to uh, career and career matters for that financial benefit. I know some of you may get a new career job or a promotion raise or something like that in the three months that follow. Sorry, guys, I got a neck adjust here. All right. If you are a Scorpio rising sun and moon, this is a narrative that's basically telling you that this is a time starting September the 23rd, add three months, where you're going to be working on your inner life as it always is for you at this time of year. This is your 12th house. It's your kind of like solitude, cave, hermit, um, spiritual quest, place of self undoing and addictions and sabotage secret negotiations behind the scenes quite often um you know this is a place where you can be quite happy you know because scorpios do like their pri privacy and secrecy as well but you know here we have mars and we haven't seen him here for two years and we, now we have also the south node we haven't seen that combination for quite a few years either so it's a big deal this ingress is opening up a letting go of something to clearly it could be an addiction like you're going to quit smoking or drinking too much alcohol or something or just letting go of some kind of self-sabotage that you you're you're habitually doing in your life in the three months that follows this um equinox story there may be some kind of career uh, developments with Venus and Juno, meaning maybe a new work contract, a new work agreement, a new job agreement coming up for you as well in the three months that follow this particular um, equinox story. Mars, though, in the 12th house, he's very much possibly inviting you to journey to foreign countries and to take a trip, basically. And if that is the case, if you do, you may travel in ways that are also going to light up your ninth house, where you have this sacred dedication and flame of devotion and a seer who can see the future. <laughs> also, this is a house of courts. So matters to do with legal things, courts, travel, visas, academia, book publishing are highlighted in the three months that follow. There is tension between this, you know, 
sun. But if you're into book publishing with Athena, who rules books, this is going to be a lot of effort and push regarding the word publications, but it could work in your behalf. I mean, it may be that the push is exactly what you need to do. The moon is stoically trying to survive being an uncomfortable Capricorn in the third house. And maybe there's th certain things going on with your siblings, cousins, or your local neighborhood and neighbors that are quite um, uncomfortable. But this is the house of writing. And with this creation god of the Tonga people and the uh, domino effect, a small change in a writing project can domino into very powerful results. And it could even generate the word international revenue for some Scorpio risings. Now, we also could say here that you could have some kind of uh, creation of a new relationship with a sibling or a cousin or with something local to you your, in your neighborhood environment. If you work in a local setting, like you work in a brick and mortar business or shop or something, this can be also very positive. Watch out for gossip though. You know, people in the workplace having uh, sensationalistic chatter about you, that's very possible because of Salacia in this six house placement and, you know, connecting, you know, in a square uh, opposition to the ingress point. Um, I don't think that you can do much about gossip in the workplace about you, but it would be stemming from jealousy because you're succeeding, guys. You are like, I don't know, if someone's told me a Scorpio, I'm not getting anywhere in my career. Well, then maybe you're listening to your Scorpio sun. For, for Scorpio risings, most Scorpio risings, your natal chart is individual. We have to look at bell curve astrology, central tendencies. You're, you could have a debilitated Venus in your natal chart, and that's why you're not getting any juice out of Venus in your 10th house. But you're, but you're supposed to be accelerating popular promotions, goodness, appeal, success, June, July, August, September into October. And this looks like it definitely is continuing, right? North Node is amplifying what goes on here. And if there's any, you know, salacious gossip and bad word about you in the workplace, probably people are wondering how you're doing so well and they're not. <laughs> so don't take it so personally, really. Yeah. Anything else I want to say? No, that's about it. Um, pets belong to the sixth house. I doubt your pets gossiping about you, but there is some tension Mars across the house of pets, and there may be some kind of tension regarding a situation with a pet. Um, I hate to say that, but it, it is possible. And yet, um, especially a pet that's ill, but you know, for the most part, I don't think it's mostly about pets. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to belabor the pet narrative. Let's draw a card for Scorpio sun, moon and rising. Mm. the 10 of wands okay so if this is a completion card you're trying to push through to finish or complete something to start anew this is often about a spiritual energy as well so a spiritual you're coming to a spiritual threshold a culmination as you get ready to push through and that doesn't surprise me i don't know if i forgot to say the vessel flame in your ninth house of god not just the house of book publishing can be with this you know seer leveling you up to a new spiritual awareness about something in life and that can be really a strong part of what the sky is showing us for you over the next three months all right sagittarius sun moon and rising in the sky we've got this uh, um this ingress of the sun on october October, September the did I say October before September the 23rd add three months this is your equinox that happens every year but we haven't seen Mars and the south node here together for quite a long time it's very special in that regard not every year is like this so with mars here letting go surrendering releasing a friend a friendship circle a group of friends a way of making great career gains or a long-held dream wish or goal for your life let it go let it go let it go sometimes a friend can do the cutting and leave you uh, a dream or wish can bail on you but there's some kind of releasing here from those things i just mentioned and you're doing hopefully some of it strategically with the energy here of a um, moon in your second house, along with Pluto, and a creation god the, of the Tonga people, for you to do something in a new way that's never been done before that has a snowball effect in your finances, I think this is positive, especially because Pluto brings wealth. So how are you going to wealth up, create some new kinds of uh, generating money that you earn or create in your life? And uh, maybe through the benefit uh, of allies and uh, friends and elder siblings also supporting that just because of the sun in the 11th house, but not without tension, all right, because it is a square. I do want to say that perhaps as well, uh, you might need to watch out for salacious stories about your children or your lover 
Okay, go, swirling around you or your entrepreneurial endeavors because of Salacia in the fifth house. Sexual scandal is Salacia in the fifth house. Uh, hopefully you don't have a sex scandal because you are having sex with your best friend's wife or husband. That could be very well a sad story here. Or your lover is having salacious stories because they are doing things that are secret and hidden. The Vestal Flame in the eighth house, which would be this is very much a days of our life soap opera for some sages about who's doing who and when and where <laughs> you could also with the moon here feel a little uncomfortable and not very nurtured by the money story in your life right now and maybe even feel a little bit constrained or worried because it is saturn sign and the moon here can be fretting about money in the next few mon months if you do fret about money which is quite possible um i think that because venus is in the ninth house of publications foreign lands courts and legal matters with the goddess of vows and contracts couple of thoughts if you're a sag rising one to publish or write a book yay you it's a, it's a slam dunk but if you're also somebody involved in legal matters and court matters and it involves money also things could work out in your behalf with venus here there may be some delays until February. She has to get out of her reformation with Mars, but all said and done, there's a maybe positive momentum regarding foreign lands, foreign shores, visas, travel to foreign countries and um, churches uh, and academic environments in the six months that follow, like getting accepted at your favorite at a university, maybe not the one you wish for, right? But getting the acceptance anyway. Um, I think the vessel flame in the eighth house is a little interesting. It's a sacred celibate priestess archetype, but in a house, it can be very much about tantric sex. And so in that way, the temple prostitute is alive here. So if you're into the tantric world and you're into sacred, sacred sexuality, uh, like that old sting song uh, about sacred love, then this is very much saying that something is trying to happen here. But I'm a little worried about the scandal that's happening in your house of romantic love at the same time. So, you know, be aware that there's a hot seat here for you or your children regarding sexual scandal or sensationalism or something like that. Finally, when it comes to money, if you're tending the flame of your finances your investments and your 401k, uh, that's wonderful but you need to see the future more clearly. There's a call to see clearly the, the future trends around money, finances, savings, 401k investments, taxes, and all of that. I think you're creating a new earning system over the next few months. And I think that's going to benefit you greatly because you are going to create something fresh in you that has a domino effect. What does the card say on the tarot of the divine for you about the story? Two of cups, partnerships, yes, well, no kidding. That's Venus Juno. Um, maybe a partner more partnerships with foreigners, book publishing, um, academic contracts. Um, but because we're talking about the, all those salacious sex stories, this is the love affair card, right? The two of cups. This is a kind of a cool deck. It's very progressive. We've got two guys touching foreheads here. Um, what is the love affair, you know, that's coming to pass? Uh, and in the next three months, what is this love affair about? If you're single and you're looking for love, it's possible you might find love in a foreign country or with a foreigner in the three months that follow this inquinox point. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I had a tickle in my throat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, especially if you're in the live premiere. The algorithmic boost from the likes is really important. Thank you so much. So Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign is, is a story. And it is one that is about your 10th house of career. And every year, like all the angular cardinal signs of Aries and Cancer and Libra, it's just always important to see what happens on the equinoxes and the solstices before us cardinal signs. So this is you, okay, having the experience of a new beginning for three months, a new story in your career. And if you want to look at the Mars story being rare and the South Node really rare, changes in your work and career. That's all that means, destined south node, but also it's, you might have to surrender, release, and let go of something in order for this to be true. And so if you're really attached to something, and if you're retired, then you have to surrender your golf games, your retirement. If you're a student, you might have to surrender your visible reputation as a student. So why? I don't know, but you might let go of something here. And in the three months that follow, you'll know what the heck you're letting go of, right? It's not going to be a surprise by then. You'll know what it is by the winter solstice that you have to surrender here. It's also your reputation. You're being strategic, though. And you're getting a lot of strategy here with Athena. And you're like a warrior of surrender. You get it. You got it down. 
and Capricorns as well. Um, one of the things I would say is that with the moon in the house of you, you are emotionally stern and stoic uh, as a result of this next three months ahead. You are kind of, I don't know, a, a female Vulcan or something. You know what I mean? Like a Spock's you know, wife or something in Star Trek. You're not about to break down and fall apart emotionally. You're kind of holding it together energetically. And because Pluto's here, not this is a progress chart, right? I mean, I'm moving forward to get everybody in here. Um, but technically speaking, you know, Pluto's presence here could be asking you to die and be born again. Or someone you know has died and is going to be very much a story that you're dealing with is the loss of somebody over the next three months. Um, because there's a new beginning of a creation god of the Tonga people asking you to set something in motion that hasn't existed to create something new. And also the domino effect from that new creation. A lot of you Capricorns are creating something brand new, never seen before, not something you've done before. And it may have to do with your career, right? The 10th house matters a whole new career path before you, a whole new purpose path before you. And you're in the next three months kind of tinkering with or allowing yourself to figure that out. Because it really also invites a death and rebirth of your identity as well. Because you have salaciousness in the fourth house, gossip from your family of origin, gossip by your mom and dad, gossip in your hometown, gossip in your homeland about you, you know, people gossiping about you in the downtown, down part of the sky, right? The privacy part it could be secret gossip that no one hears about, though, because you are, it's not the public part of the sky. I kind of also would say, you know, Venus is holding for it here with Juno in the house of chunky money, inheritance money, and there may be scandals around inheritance money that's circulating around you in the three months that follow. There also may be some stories here about Venus trying to support you financially regarding investments and equities and mortgages and loans and shared monies with a spouse or partner. And so there could be some some contractual agreements made around shared resources with another, but like a bank, you know, refinance or mortgages. These are big themes for you over the next three months. And Venus as Lord of this ingress point, right, is saying these support you in your career and visible reputation, almost like a financial restructure is going on here. You have a devotional flame in your seventh. You may be devoted to a business partner or love partner, or they're devoted to you. This is very sacred love energy. And also sitting here with this little uh, asteroid is uh, Absolute, the seer who could predict the future, see what was coming down the pipeline. So having a foresight or foreseeing is important by you or your, your love or business partner. And it really would help you, you know, because it's also the house of contractual agreements as well uh, and vow. So and really able to like kind of pierce the veil and see ahead will be a very important part of what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, you do have Mercury in the house of visas and passports and legal matters. So if it comes to relationships, you may be looking for how to secure clear guide, clear legal guidance on things to do with love relationships or business partnerships as well in the three months that follow this solstice ingress. Okay, there's some, for some of you, there's a move, right? Mars in the 10th house opposite the fourth change of home. But if you're changing your home, it has a lot more to do with a need to change it because of things to do with your purpose, career direction, or your love and business partnerships in your life. Okay, that's the gist of that. And you're doing a little fiscal hygiene because hygiene is moving through the house, second house of you. All right, I'm going to pull a card for you, Capricorns, and it is the Knight of Wands. That's movement. It's fast moving. It's a fast moving night. Something's changing quickly. Can be a change of career, change of home, change of uh, relationship, and change of finances because of this chart. It's all all are possible. Um, but there's a like that. All the wands are very spiritual energy, and it's always very high spirited change. So there's a sense of high spirited change and good news coming with it as well i just added an extra card which is a page of wands Alrighty, i'm moving on to the next sign and don't forget to hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications if you haven't already done that uh, in the live premiere or in the replay moving forward to me i'm aquarius rising and sun and moon other people you guys too are a part of the aquarius narrative 
Now, you're not going to see the things the way they're supposed to look. You can see that the moon is moving forward because I'm just advancing the chart. That's how fast the moon moves, just not to make it so awful. I'm going to move everybody back in time uh, so we can at least get the moon in the right place. And when we look at Aquarius, we're seeing the moon in the right uh, sign. Okay. So Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising, we're going to have this story coming into the play on the 23rd of September at three months. This is a baked in narrative about what's going on in your ninth house of publishing, foreign land travel, visas, academia, third marriages, and things to do with your spiritual philosophy and sometimes court and legal matter. So up here, there's a strategic, she's often a lawyer. Um, Athena often represents lawyers uh, in real life client practice, as well as librarians or curators of knowledge. And, you know, so you may be consulting legal guidance regarding academia, book publishing, uh, foreign travel, stuff like that over the next three months from this ingress point of the sun into Libra. At the same time, you're also surrendering, releasing, and letting go of what? A spiritual philosophy, of a legal matter. You might be fighting, but releasing. You might want to, you know, cut away something that doesn't serve you anymore, some spiritual philosophy or belief. So there's a cutting away, ending, and letting go quality to Mars South Node. It's quite rare. It's not happened recently that those two are together in your sky, in your ninth house. Because the ninth house is very much about the house of God um, and North, South Node is about moksha or spiritual liberation. If you are looking for spiritual awakening, this is a very positive thing. <clears throat> Most of the world isn't looking for it, but if you are, it could open up spiritual enlightenment energies over the next three months. Because as well, this lunation is happening in like this first quarter moon i should say is happening in the 12th house it's also a moksha and enlightenment house so quite possibly you know you're being stoic and you know emotionally steady here and not getting all caught up in overwhelming feelings but you could create something new that has a domino effect regarding enlightenment awakening spirituality if you are someone who generates revenue and Pluto can bring you wealth here from foreign interests, uh, international companies, PayPal, Stripe, uh, clients or revenue from people around the world. Certainly a new system, a new idea, uh, a domino effect, a new beginning. You have to push it out. It's the first quarter moon, but you can succeed here as well, especially if that new system involves the word international. Double down on that where this uh, Equinox story is playing out. It's salaciousness, gossip in your local neighborhood about you. Your neighbors are talking about you. Your siblings are talking about you. Your cousins are talking about you. Sensationalistic, gossipy narratives, true or untrue, uh, circulating. This is the online world as well. So gossip in the online world. As an Aquarius, is probably just more trolls. But who knows? Maybe there's online sensationalistic stories about me that aren't true, for example. One of the things here with Venus holding fort for this three months narrative from the place of the seventh new business partnerships are coming to you in the next three months and the story of any romantic partnership as well. So love partnerships, business partnerships are on the highlight for the next three months. Venus may not complete the whole story until February when she can catch up with Mars, but for now she's trying to apply the partnering quality to your business and love narratives in the next three next three months um and that could be literally contracts that you sign as well like you know deals and contracts etc um with your clients with your business partners with your main squeeze because you have the vestal flame of devotion in the house of sickness and also work you're devoted to your work you're burning the midnight oil you're dedicated or you're devoted to better protocols for health and because you have the seer you see the future absolute says this is the direction things are probably going so you've got a dedication but you've also got a vision forward and you can see where things may head yet because this dedication is opposite this moon right and squaring the uh, equinox itself the ingress it's this tension. And so what kind of work, de dedication, devotion are you applying to your reality that may be causing you to question yourself? You know, are you working too hard, basically? 
uh, is this dedication worth it? Because the moon who owns the temple where the de dedication is happening is hiding in the cave of the 12th house, feeling rather stoic and stern, but wanting to create a new system. So if you are overly dedicated to your work or fixated on your health to uh, an over degree, uh, uh, you may be looking at new beginnings. Because this uh, moon, Quoar, Folos, domino effect is in a house that can be about self addiction self undoing and addictions some of you are also creating a new system or coming across a new way that has a domino effect of getting out from underneath some sabotaging or addictive substance or pattern in your life in the next three months if you want to be salacious in your online world and you want to be sensationalistic go for it why not? You've got Salacia there because she trines Venus. So in essence, it works on your publicity behalf. behalf um, it works on your behalf to be sensationalistic, basically. That's what I'm saying. So if it's you writing stuff or speaking or communicating stuff in the online space, it's very shocking and salacious and sensational. It could actually work for you here, right? This may not be you're being talked about. You may be doing the talking. Let's draw a card for Aquarius. And then we'll do the Pisces and we'll move on. All right. So Aquarius from the Tarot of the Divine, the Emperor. Well, that's the builder. What are you building right now? What new foundations are you laying? What are you trying to materialize and manifest? It's very businessman orient orientation at the highest level. So over the next three months, that archetype of the Emperor is big in your story. Over the next three months, you are building something important. And last and always last, but first and always first, the Pisces sun, moon and rising of the universe. Pisces, it is a time for you that it, it is a, a story of the sun coming into your house of chunky money. It's 401k investments, bank loans, inheritances, shared money with a spouse or partner in business. This energy is having a change mars south node release surrender and let go be careful of course for losses this could be very careful about investment losses in the three months that follow this lunation but it could be changes with not lunation it's the first quarter moon this in ingress equinox ingress venus is in charge of it and she's over here with contracts vows and agreements juno in the house of work some of you may be coming into a possible new work job experience and you work contract coming your way in the three months that follow or a new commitment or vow to a better health practice for your life well you are the salacious one the gossip isn't here in the house of speech it could very well be you or their salacious gossipy stories circulating about how you spend or earn money that could be true too for some of you or you're speaking sensationalistic words into the world about something, you know, to do with uh, anything, actually. <laughs> um, the moon is stoic and stern in Capricorn, not in her home sign, you know, and she's sitting up in the 11th house of, of friends and allies. But you're trying to also call this a house of your career gains. And you're trying to engineer something or create something, Tonga God, creation God, brand new, never been done before, Folos, or at least by you, a domino effect that can increase your your 10th house gains over the next three months. But at the same time, quite especially yeah especially here at the same time with pluto here it's quite the, the intensity it can involve an elder sibling as well or an ally or friend that could also be helping you uh establish a new path that's brand new so a, a friend an ally an elder sibling can have a domino effect that impacts your chunky money your earning spending stories as well as career gains in your life in the next three months because this is the inheritance house and the sun is with the lawyer Athena and Mars is cutting and severing and self notice loss for some Pisces there is some inheritance money through you or your spouse their family yours I don't know um, coming your way in the next three months or knowledge of that money should be coming to you or those resources shall be coming to you I think that you could also say that with the flame of devotion and the house of children and it's squaring this whole story um, maybe there's some level of devotion to your children some dedication to your children or your creativity or your entrepreneurial business or to your sex life that is being challenged here and you can see the writing on the wall the uh, the seer is here 
especially if you have to give money to children, financially support children, especially adult children, or you're being asked to, um, you know, spend a lot of money in some kind of entrepreneurial endeavor, you're second guessing a lot of that, especially a creative project. You know, the Vessel Flame in the fifth house can be about this dedication to a creative project. And yet at the expense of some financial goodness. So you're re- re- reassessing that in the next um, few months, the next three months from this 23rd of September point in the sky. I wonder. Um, hmm. The other thing is, is that secrets belong to the eighth house and Mars can definitely be an agitator. So some kind of releasing of things that you didn't know, some kind of secrets regarding your children in particular could be coming through the sky in the next three months, some kind of revelations there. And um, especially when it comes to money and, and children. Hmm. Mars is a thief. Be careful. Mars in the eighth house is money being stolen by a lover or your children (laughs) or money being hidden by a lover or your children. So be careful for those stories. I'm making it like a a scandal here, but we have salacia in in a a money house as well and a wound. So this would come to light over the next three months. It's not something you can stop or start anyway. I love Venus here. She's flowing to your money house from the house of work and the house of wellness, uh, prevention of sickness. So there's a lot of good things going on in the next three months. It's not all so gnarly. Finally, um, possibly... A powerful female, wealthy, powerful female can be a great ally to you over the next three months, um, especially as it pertains to helping you with your finances in any way possible. An elder sibling is a particularly powerful ally in the next three months or factor in your money story as well as a powerful friend. All right, well, that's that. A card for you guys, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising, and we'll finish up today, is uh, the Four of Coins. Are you feeling a little scarce about money? Uh, are you needing to lay a new financial foundation and you're worrying about it? I, I drew this card for another sign. Again, it's the second house, eighth house. It brings money stories into play for you. And, and 11th and 5th are also money axes. So getting the four coins means you may be feeling a poverty consciousness, a scarcity consciousness, a consciousness around uh, f- financial resourcefulness that is not easy. You're clinging a bit, but you can also build a new foundation with all fours, right? So not to let it undo you here. The sky is trying to establish something new in the money story for you over the next three years months and i did get the three of cups so things for most of you will work out in a sense of celebration by the time we get to the solstice at christmas time all right thanks for listening i hope that was enjoyable for you guys you can't tell that i'm feeling like really weird today but yesterday and today i had a two-day headache are you in the live premiere and you're listening to me please hit the like button don't forget to check out my description box for everything i'm offering there's a whole bunch of stuff down below um, you want to sign up get on wait list you can't get a reading from with me yet sorry about that um i'm all booked up until next april may but i will be dripping dripping out new spots as i have time in the new year january february march and as well as maybe some in december if i can round out the space for them so there will be new spots available if you want to get on my wait list it's in the description box so you'll be the first to hear about it and you'll be able to secure a spot last time i opened the wait list up for spots in the fall uh, for my priority pass of my existing clients, they all filled within like 24 hours and there was a lot of spots. So that's part of my problem right now with you guys. I want, you know, you newbies coming onto my channel, or my Patreon as well to be able to get in to see me. So that's the value of getting on any of my wait lists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. I'll see you soon. Uh, don't forget to like my channel, share and subscribe. Bye-bye. Oh, and I'm recording on September 18th.